Welcome traders to another Tickmail live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, before we get going here, if you could, uh, if you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box so I know we're uh, good to get started. <clears throat> Thanks very much. Um, and before we get going, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Uh, material provided information purposes only and should not be considered investment advice. Most importantly, uh, the charts and uh, patterns that I'm assessing today are, uh, are opinions held by me. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Uh, so for those of you who are here for the first time today, uh, just a brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for tech startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, sometimes quite literally overnight, I decided to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately, day gambling the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. As the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all of my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, uh, this was a period of time during which I not I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing a strategy that importantly suited my personality, uh, researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing my strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly though, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through my managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing uh, trade and market analysis to Tickmill. Most recently, I have uh, been involved in what I guess is a uh, passion project for me as head of trading and trader education for a leading trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com offering development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge, we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you're interested in finding out more about what we're doing at FX Career Swap, you can uh, call the number on the screen here, that's the trade desk in London, or you could drop them an email and they'll come back to you with information about, uh, about the program. So um, before we jump into the charts, I'd just like to say, if you have, uh, if you have any questions or, you have a, or there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I don't cover in my review here, um, then if you can just wait till the end and I'll open up a Q&A and you can 
either type the chart into the chat or I can unmute your mic if you uh, if you're brave enough to want to speak to me on over the uh, audio system. Okay, so this week we're uh, we're going to take a look into some of these intraday charts. If we can identify some opportunities using uh, a basic Elliott wave overlay, uh, looking for impulse moves that uh, that are either coming to an end, uh, driven by uh, by a loss of momentum and price pattern completion, or we um, or we're looking at the uh, corrective legs, whereby we can uh, align ourselves with a broader trend. So I'm going to start here with the dollar index. So the dollar index uh, topped out into uh, into this 93.42, and since then we've had a, a what I believe is, is an impulsive decline uh, down into the 90.40 low, subdivided quite nicely into to five waves. Um, so what we what we'd anticipate now is that, uh, that if, if we had finished this, this initial cycle to the downside, that we should see a corrective pattern that normally would unfold in uh, three, uh, three swings or five swings. Um, and so what we're looking at now is we've had this initial move off the lows and uh, we had a pullback here. And versus that pullback, what we'd anticipate would be a, an equality swing so an equal swing to the initial move, which would put us up into this 9180. And then if we bring in the uh, proof retracement tool here, you can see that that brings us just shy of the 50% retracement. So that's the target at the moment for, um, for, this, for this corrective pattern to play out. Now, obviously we're seeing a bit of weakness here in terms of the, uh, the dollar index at the moment rolling over. It could be technically uh, that this that we the correction has completed because although it's not uh, although it didn't meet the equal legs objective that we'd ideally like to see it do doesn't necessarily always do that um, the fact that we had a pullback and made a marginal new high from a from a technical perspective that's sufficient to to suggest that the uh, this correction could be complete now when will we get the confirmation of that well we don't really get confirmation of it if we take out uh, the current uh, swing low at 90.40. And then what would that allow us to do? Well, it would, if, if this is the, uh, the first, or sorry, if this leg is complete now, let me just remove this and I'll show you the type of pattern you could expect to play out. So if we don't hold support here at, uh, at 90.80 and we start to get some momentum to the downside and we clip uh, that low, then what you'd look for then um, would be an interim three wave uh, corrective pattern to align with the next leg to the downside. And you wanna be thinking in terms of the scope and scale for that type of pattern. Uh, let me just draw this in and then I'll extend it and show exactly what I'd be looking for. So, there we go. So you can see here this move off the highs. You can see these type of corrective. Well, you, we've got a three-way corrective pattern here. On the if you if you went into the hourly time frame, you'd be able to see this more clearly. But technically, that meets the criteria. So if we think in terms of the next leg here, we can uh, we can use prior price action to give us some cues or clues as to uh, as to what we could expect in terms of the setup. And so we'd be looking at. Um, Five completing down. We're looking at first of all, we need to take out the lows. That hasn't worked. One second, guys. We will get there in the end. So we want to see a new low in the cycle. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be a major new low, just needs to take out this prior low to confirm that we have a, a, a play developing. And then what we'd anticipate would be that we are going to do this scenario in a second. Squeeze that up here. So we then extend to the downside and we'd be anticipating an equal leg versus 
this decline. So maybe we don't extend that far. Let's see, we get something like that. So that would be, if, if this cycle is complete here at this high, and again, we only get confirmation on a new low, but if that, is the, if that plays out, then the first correction will be an opportunity to enter the market to target an equality objective at a minimum to the downside. There is on the weekly chart, a bigger downside objective at 87.50, which, which I've been tracking. Um, but for now, in terms of the, the, the initial, the, the immediate opportunity, Firstly, it would be on a break of new lows and the first pullback would be an entry on the short side. Or alternatively, we, uh, we hold support and we have an A, B, C quality objective uh, that takes us into the 50 to 60, 1.8% retracement zone, which would then set up an opportunity on the short side. You obviously you want, I, personally, I wait for, for price pattern to confirm, uh, candlestick setup, but, uh, that would then give you an entry, and that also could, could be the setup for the equality leg to the downside. Now, if you get in, if you get in on that type of trade, what's prudent to do is to make sure that by the uh, the fifty percent retracement of the last leg, you want to have your trade as a risk-free position. Why is that? Well, it's because what we could see happen, and it plays out many times is that instead of taking out the prior lows and heading down immediately for the equality objective, we could again see something, uh, we could see a slightly more complex double correction before uh, we take off again to the downside. So what would that look like? Well, we look something like this, where we get up here and we get a pullback, but we can make another move up into to complete the double correction. And then from there, we could look for the equality objective. So what's important here is if we, once we get the equal legs objective, which was, is sufficient for the correction to have completed, then we want to, uh, if, we get a, if we get a reversal pattern that meets our, our entry criteria, then certainly at the 50% retracement of that leg, we want to get the position to risk free to rule out being stopped out in a double correction. And then again, once we've got, if once we have, if, if we hold that 50%, we know that there's a high probability then that we're going to see that double correction. And so that, uh, that would allow us to align again with the trend given, uh, given reversal pattern confirmation. So those are the two scenarios I'm watching in, um, in the dollar index at the moment. Euro dollar uh, shared this one. We could have, I mean, the, technically we could have a wave four low in place here and a major um, wave too low in place. Again, we're going to need to see um, prices extend through the prior highs here at 2150. But equally, if uh, if we can take out this swing high here at 120.76, then we can start to think about playing the first pullback here to align with this bigger opportunity to the upside. Equally, what we want to pay attention to is the potential that we are we have a, if if the dollar index was going to be uh, moving into a double correction then we want to factor the idea that once if we get up here into this 50 61.8 percent retracement zone that um that the euro could be putting in a bigger corrective pattern like so before taking off to the upside so we let the price unfold and watch for the confirmation before uh, before getting involved but certainly at this stage, this move off the low equal to the dollar index's move off the high has impulsive qualities. And, uh, and at the moment, we, uh, we want to be thinking in terms of the long side of the euro and the short side in terms of the dollar. Sterling, a bit of whippy action today uh, uh, with the BOE. But ultimately, what I'm looking for here with Sterling is a test of this equality objective, 137.59. 137.60, which has been this range support. And I think that then could be the opportunity to get in on the long side in Sterling. And again, positioned for this to be the, advance, the initial advance, initial correction, and we could see something impulsive to the upside here in terms of Sterling. So we'll have to wait to see how, uh, how we play out there. Uh, dollar Yen. <clears throat> so it, the, this move certainly has impulsive qualities to the downside, subdivides nicely. Into, uh, into a five-wave pattern. So what we're looking for now is a corrective pattern to play out. So 
initially what we want to think about is um, we have this move off the low one second so we have this leg here matching this leg so we could see a, a 110 uh, 1103 there let's just retrace our decline over here. So that comes in around uh, just ahead of the 78.6% retracement. So we could get, again, double correction potential here, but whilst we hold this 108.43 support, watch for reversal patterns at uh, 110.03, 110.20. And again, what we're targeting will be the equality objective versus this move. So we can still, this, this could on the, on the higher time frame, on the daily time frame, still be a corrective pattern, but it's, it's what we're looking at here are uh, more of the intraday opportunities. And so we, uh, we want to watch how price responds here. Do we get bearish reversal patterns? If so, we've got a high probability shorting opportunity to, uh, to be targeting the move down into the 106.70 zone. Aussie. Uh, little again with the Aussie, if uh, it's a little bit more, uh, the chart isn't as clean as some of those other uh, patterns that we just looked at. But we can uh, highlight here a potentially impulsive move into the uh, seventy-eight sixteen, and what looks at the moment to be corrective in terms of A, B, C. So it meets the criteria. We haven't um, we haven't tested the equality objective, and again. We, uh, we want to watch for those setups because those tend to provide the best opportunities. So we haven't quite, so whilst if we hold 7760s here and we get another leg down, watch 7648 uh, as the equal legs versus this structure and set bullish, uh, set, watch for bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions. And certainly we can think about a, a retest of uh, the prior highs here at, uh, at the 80 level. So where would this thesis, where would this be invalidated? Where would we start to be, need to be starting to think about the short side? Well, we'd have to take out 75, uh, 75. And if we did, then what we'd be starting to think is, well, this is probably now impulsive. And then what we'd look for would be to play that first correction there and take us into a new wave five low. And then we'd anticipate another three wave before the next leg to the downside. So the, We've got some parameters here, which would uh, which would suggest that the, you know this pattern that I, I'm expecting to play out uh, is invalid, and that would be through 75, 75. And if uh, if we but if we do get the uh, the bullish scenario here, and we've completed uh, the correction into this low, then our next opportunity to short would be on a new high here through uh, 78.50. Sorry to get long. We'd want to play the first corrective pullback in three waves to target then and move up into the wave three objective prior highs. Then we'd anticipate another correction before moving up into potential wave five. Kiwi, cleaner pattern again. Like like the uh, like to, to see how this plays out. So again, this and this is an important process to be able to go through. Is one to be able to identify the impulse. But then two, to be able to think in terms of the corrective um, patterns. And so technically, the Kiwi could have completed its correction because we have this high, this low, this high, and then this reaction low. So that's sufficient um, for, a, for the, from a technical perspective for the uh, correction to have completed. Where will we get confirmation of that? Well, again, we can only get confirmation on a new high I and mean, if we do get a new high, that sets up the possibility of entering on the first three wave correction to play for uh, certainly a retest of highs and probably uh, on towards new highs. So, but whilst we hold uh, 72.29 here and we're seeing uh, a bit of congestion, we can think about another corrected leg lower before a set before the next leg to the upside. And where would that complete? Well, if we hold, if, as we hold 72.29, we'd look for 70.59 back into the prior uh, wave one high here as, as well. So if that unfolds in three legs, we want to watch for bullish reversal patterns here to set long positions, right? same objective in terms of testing and taking out the prior highs. Again, just a cleaner pattern, easier to, uh, to visually grasp uh, the structures there. Swissy. 
So Swissy again, like the dollar index, we have this uh, clear uh, decline, subdividing in, into five waves. We might have a new wave five low here. And again, what we're always watching for is this divergence. So we, well, I think we we'll probably get some uh, some divergence here into this uh, potential wave five low. Let's another way of, of getting some target zones for that wave five is uh, is overlaying the fibs here. So at a minimum, we'd expect the wave five to test the one two seven extension to the downside of this prior corrective move. So again, let me just blow this up. And you can start to uh, see how you. So it's clear you can see an A B C structure there. Is it an equal legs? Let's have a look. So yeah, you can see we have an equal leg C and we're now looking like this could be an impulsive move to the downside to complete this wave five. So here's the initial decline, quick correction move there. Now we're in the wave three. Does wave three pause at the one, two, seven and we get another little correction to retest the prior lows before going to the ideal one, six, one extension and then setting up this pattern. Okay. So that's what we're looking for there with the Swissy. The other, the alternative scenario is we do a double from the lows here. We make a double bottom, uh, but equally that just sets up the next trade to the downside. So, uh, so again, just waiting for these confirmations in terms of uh, taking out these swing structures to, to let you know, or give you a fair idea of what's to come and where the opportunity is uh, to engage. Sterling Yen. I think Sterling Yen has the potential to have completed. Uh, we can see this is, looks impulsive. It's not as clean as some of the other patterns, but certainly you can uh, think to yourself in terms of one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're correcting. So ideally what we'd like to see, we've, uh, this is a, a, just a straight move to the downside here. So what we could anticipate is that we get an equal legs into, so I want to be paying attention to how we trade 150.72, bullish reversal patterns there. And I think uh, we can start to think about uh, trading up to this 155 objective and the top side of what could be a broadening, uh, broadening top pattern there. Euro yen. Similar scenario here, but Euro yen has actually given us uh, the completion of the correction. So we've got A, B, equal leg C. We went into the, the target zone um, of the 3120 to 3090, we've got bullish reversal pattern. So now we've got uh, a potential wave four low in place and we look for a wave five here uh, to develop. So watch as, uh, as we extend here, if we can get through, let's uh, see how So if we can, uh, if we can get up into this 78.6%, uh, take that out, you can play a mini correction intraday to, um, to get you in to play for the wave five extension to the upside. Because uh, if this pattern is correct, if this C-low is correct, then, uh, then we'd anticipate a move through 132.16, first pullback would set you up into the trade. But again, the alternative scenario, and we won't know uh, just yet which one's going to play out, would be that we have a symmetry swing here that gives us this move. So it could, again, we could be thinking in terms of a double correction. Symmetry swing versus that last leg. So if we stall out here at 131.77, then we change our um, corrective target to the downside to give us this pattern should have us back into 130.40, but still from there, if, uh, if we get bullish reversal patterns, then, uh, then we can expect our, our low to be in place and we'd look for the move to play out like so. So we just see if we get through this symmetry swing resistance, uh, then we can start to think about the first pullback to get long. But if we stall out here, then we've got a target zone where we'd be looking to, uh, to re-engage uh, on the long side versus, uh, versus the double corrective pattern. Aussie Yen. 
Uh, not particularly clear here, we're in, a, we're in a very complex correction, but this is the type of pattern I would imagine plays out that we get a test into the top side and then we need to pull back to retest the uh, trend line support here before we extend higher in the fifth wave. CAD yen has been uh, has traded very well. This was uh, a pattern I shared uh, through the E-Wave, the Tickmill E-Wave videos. We've got the ABC traded into the zone, big bullish reversal, first three wave pullback. You know, I'll just draw this in for you so you can see how this thing works. You can see we've got that ABC pullback and then we were in a, uh, or we had been in a wave three, which I think we're, uh, we've seen the high of now. We've seen wave three. This can be, this is our wave four low. So now we're looking for a wave five. So let's, let's do the same thing and, um, and get some target areas here and we can see significant divergence here. So this is an opportunity um, on the short side. Let's, uh, let's measure. So this in the, the initial way I measure for a wave five high is using the wave one, because more often than not, you'll get an equality swing uh, to complete. So we've got uh, 89.77. Let's bring in the, the Fib tool again and see where we get you can see, so we've got that 161 extension there that's, conf that's coalescing with the wave one equality objective. So I'd pay very close attention to how we trade 89.66, 89.76, bearish reversal patterns there. And then we've got an opportunity to play the corrective move. And more often than not, what we're thinking initially is, uh, is a 38.2% retracement and a retest of the wave four low. So we could be looking back to, uh, to 88.44 uh, for the initial move, and then more likely than not, we correct that before we put in the equality objective to the downsides. Um, but certainly because we've taken out highs here in terms of this CAD yen, um, there's a there's great two-way trading opportunity here. There's the opportunity to, uh, to fade this, this next high for, a, for an interim wave five high to complete. Uh, we've got bags of divergence down here. So that supports this, the potential for this trade. And then there's the potential to play the correction to join the, uh, the, the higher degree trend, which, uh, which is still to the upside in terms of the uh, CAD yen at the moment. So this is how you can start to map out where the opportunity is in, in advance. And then you're just waiting for the price action uh, to confirm. Euro sterling. So the Euro sterling has completed or is potentially completing a correction. I like to be long euro sterling through these highs at, uh, at 87.20, targeting the equality objective versus uh, this structure here. So this, this low, uh, equal legs 88.33 uh, would be the, uh, the target for that trade. I'm just cognizant of the time here. Um, let's take a look at copper. Copper is another one that looks like it's coming into it's wave five high, it's been on a tear, but uh, clearly we can see um, that we've got plenty of divergence down here. We can uh, look at the pattern here. Um, we can call that one, two, three, four, and we're looking for a five here. So let's, again, same process. Let's, uh, let's do this. So if that's going to be our four low, then the, um, the upside objective, I'll just get rid of that for a second. So the upside objective is uh, 4.6535. And let's just bring in our FIB tool. And again, we have that 161 extension just uh, below the 200% extension. So this is the target zone here for copper to get a pullback to complete uh, this what would then be the third wave of the higher degree time frame because we've got this move off the low. So then what we'd be thinking is in terms of um, this scenario next. So from this zone, we'd then be looking for this move and you can start to see how the bigger wave pattern uh, starts to um, develop. Last but not least, uh, let's take a look at the S&P for today. 
S&P 500. So what we're looking at here is um, if we can get a move today through uh, the 41.91 level, uh, this could be a wave five extension to the upside here. Got this little mini correction there. We look, let's get back into the highs here, pull back, pull back. And we've got a target, or I've got a target at the moment uh, to get up into 42.44 in terms of uh, in terms of this leg, which would be which would complete the cycle. Um, this being our wave four, uh, and this one second, guys. Uh, so this is our this is the, the interim uh, wave one. But then what we'd anticipate is that we get uh, we get a pullback, something like this. Again, getting that prior wave four test, and then I think we get uh, we get a significant extension again to the upside in this type of shape to complete a much bigger cycle. Before once again thinking in terms of uh, in terms of the downside or corrective moves. So you see how you can build this stuff out once you understand or have a relatively simple understanding really of the structures and how the patterns uh, play into each other and play into the, the different cycles on the different time frames. So those are, those are some of the charts I'm watching. Paying really close attention to this CAD yen and copper. Uh, watch, watch this S&P today if we can get through uh, that key level at uh, 41.90. Dollar index and euro also on the radar. And that Kiwi also is a very clean pattern. Wanted to uh, see how that plays out in terms of the, the structure. So you can see there how you can very quickly identify some relatively low, uh, low risk opportunities on these intraday charts using this, this type of technical overlay. Um, and I hope, uh, hope you found that useful. Are there any questions? If you don't have a question, uh, it's helpful for me if you type an N in the chat box. Equally, if you do have a question, feel free to Type it into the chat box. Sterling uh, Swiss. Let's take a look at Sterling Swiss. Sterling Swiss. Yes, I mean this. This if, again with the Sterling Swiss. I I I, I was. In this earlier in the week and got uh, got stopped on uh, on on the pullback. But what I again we we met we met the criteria um, for a low to be in place on this new low. So thinking in terms of uh, the pattern. So we have a b. This was sufficient. The fact we made a new low was sufficient to uh, to constitute completion of the cycle. What I think we're looking at now. Is um, is probably something more like this. So until we take out one twenty eight twenty, um, one twenty eight twenty on the upside, the probability balance probability suggests we need to take a look at one twenty three seventy first, and then watch for bullish reversal patterns there because that uh, <coughs> that would then complete this this cycle. And then we could start to uh, start to think about the next leg to the upside. But equally, get through one twenty eight twenty, and um, and as as long as you know we've got an, an impulsive setup there, it could be that, uh, that this is what we, we can start to think about. Uh, Okay, if there aren't any other questions, guys, I'm gonna wrap this session up here. Hope you found it useful and um, <coughs> to keep an eye on some of these, uh, these pairs that we've talked about and see if you can uh, start overlaying the patterns yourself. And um, I'm, again, always looking for that price action confirmation for, uh, before jumping in. Uh, Derek, Euro Yen, Euro Yen. So here's where I'm at with the Euro Yen, Derek. If we can get through uh, 131.75, then you can start to think about playing the first pullback as we've probably got our way for low in place. But if, uh, if we can't get through this 131.75, I'd anticipate we're probably gonna do a double correction. And, um, and if that's the case, 
your target zone where you can look to get uh, look for bullish reversal patterns will be down to 130, 39 area. Bullish reversal patterns there should be the, the wave four, interim wave four low in place. And then you can start to think about a test up to uh, 132. Does that make sense, Derek? Okay, good stuff. I am going to wrap this session up here and uh, we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much and uh, have a great week.